What's going on? What's going on, YouTube? This your boy, Steve, the kidney nurse. Man, I tell you, the last 15, 20, 30 minutes has been something. I got restricted from Facebook, so I cannot post anything on Facebook. So I had to switch everything to YouTube. So share this video. It's unfortunate because this is going to be a great show. And I think the devil tried to block it. And that's why that happened with Facebook restriction. But this is going to be an awesome broadcast on hemodialysis catheter, how to keep yours working. The one person, if you can share this broadcast to Facebook and ask them to share, to ask them to share, man, it would be appreciated because the more people that find out about this broadcast, the better. Because a lot of warriors have hemodialysis catheters. So I'm going to get right into the education session. And before I start, I just like to say the information disclaimer or the education disclaimer. Let me remove this. Uh, the information broadcast on Urban Health Outreach Media is provided for educational and informational purposes only and is not intended or implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Now, with that being said, let's get into the education session again. Hemodialysis catheter, how to keep yours working. Now, hemodialysis is a treatment used when your kidneys fail. Normally at stage five, when you get to about 5% GFR glomerular filtration rate and can no longer clean your blood and remove extra fluid from your body. Now, a hemodialysis catheter, or well, let me repeat that, a hemodialysis access or vascular access is a way to reach your blood for hemodialysis. Now, if you receive hemodialysis, your access is one of the following. An AV fistula made by joining an artery and a vein in your arm. An AV graft made by using a soft tube to join an artery and vein in your arm or leg. Then a catheter, right? A soft tube that is placed in a large vein, usually in your neck. Now, you got this one, which is an IJ catheter, right? Then you got the tunnel catheter. Now, for this information uh, purposes, we're talking about the hemodialysis catheter. We're going to be talking about both of these, all right? Now, what is a catheter? I already showed you right here you see what it is how it looks like now in theory let's look into what this device is a hemodialysis catheter the catheter is used for hemodialysis is a tunnel catheter because it is placed under the skin now let me give you a um example of that just bear with Steve, the kidney nurse. Okay. Now, this would be an example of a tunnel catheter. As you can see, let me remove this. As you can see where um, the two limbs, the red and the blue with the yellow caps, how they go into one and then it goes under the skin and into that vena cava. Now, 
There are two types of tunnel catheters, cuffed or non-cuffed. Now, let me show you uh, a picture of the non-cuff. This would be considered a non-cuff, which is an IJ. They put it right here in the side into a jugular vein. And uh, non-cuff are used for emergency and for short periods up to three weeks. Right here, it's very uncomfortable. I've seen a lot of warriors with this, and you know, just having them to keep their neck straight when we change the dressing, and even for them trying to sleep or turn their neck, that catheter is right there. Now, the tunnel catheter, which is this right here, uh, is a uh, tight recommended uh by most access surgeons for temporary access and can be used for longer than three weeks this one you can use longer than three weeks as you can see here an av fistula or grab has been placed but is not ready for use so most warriors get this catheter one when they get an AV fistula or graft and they just had surgery and they're waiting for it to develop uh, or there are no other options for permanent access. For example, when a patient's blood vessels are not strong enough for a fistula or graft. And we've seen many instances like that. Now, catheters have two openings. You can see that at the bottom. The red and the blue, where the yellow caps are. One is red, which is arterial. Uh, that's the opening to draw blood from your veins and out of your body into the, di the dialysis pathway. And the other is the blue, which is the venous, opening that allows clean blood to return to your body. Now, one of the big questions are, how do I take care of my catheter? How do you take care of it? Let me reiterate, by taking good care of your access, it will last longer and you will prevent problems such as infection and clotting. Now, let me give you some important steps to take. One. Keep the catheter dressing clean and dry. Two, make sure the area of insertion site is clean and the care team changes the dressing at each dialysis session. Three, keep an emergency dressing kit at home. If you even got to go on Amazon to get a dressing kit, do it. If you can't get it from your dialysis clinic. In case you need to change your dressing in between treatments. Again, ask your dialysis care team to teach you how to change dressings in an emergency. And if they don't want to teach you, we can show you here Urban Health Outreach Media and Steve the Kidney Nurse. Four, never remove the caps. You see where the uh, yellow. Um, caps are on the end of your catheter. Air, and I repeat, air must not enter the catheter. Do not shower or swim. You may take baths. However, many warriors have went online and found dressings to cover up their sight when they take showers. You must, I'm reading what the research literature says. You must not wet your catheter site or catheter dressing. Moisture can cause infection. Taking a bath is safe if you do not allow your catheter or catheter dressing to get wet. Six, wear a mask over your nose and mouth anytime the catheter is open to prevent bacteria from entering the catheter and your bloodstream. Professionals changing the dressing should wear a mask 
and gloves as well. Seven, the caps and the clamps of the catheter should be kept tightly closed when not being used for dialysis. Only your care team should use your dialysis catheter to draw blood or to give medications or fluid. If the area around your catheter feels sore or looks red, call your dialysis team at once. Ask your dialysis team about signs and symptoms that require immediate attention. Okay, now this is very important. Know your KT over V and URR, which stands for urea reduction ratio. KT over V and URR are numbers that tell you how much dialysis you are getting. Uh, national recommendations using KT over V if you are receiving enough dialysis, your KT over V should be at least 1.2. If URR is used, it should be 65% or more. If your numbers are too low, one possible cause may be that your access is not working well. And let me remove this picture. That's important because a lot of warriors that have the catheter right, and if the machine keeps going off every like three minutes, five minutes, and the technician says it's your catheter and asks you to take a deep breath, um, and it keeps going off, that can affect your URR and your KT over V and how you feel because you're not getting enough dialysis. It's not enough free flow blood coming through the catheter because you may have a clot that, and I want to talk about this. You see these little uh, holes? You may not can't see it uh, because it's green uh, and my, I'm using the green screen, but let me take the green screen away. Hold on, because this is important. I'm sorry. Hold on. I love my green screen, but I'm going to take it away for the sake of education. Okay, so right here, you see these little holes? Those holes right there in the catheter that you see, they can get clot because blood tends to uh, stick to, um, you know, outside the body on stuff like this, the blood is going to clot. That's why we give heparin. So those holes get clogged up by the uh, byproduct of the uh, blood, blood, uh, blood products. They're going to stick to it. That's why we flush the catheter. If you can see those little holes. So let me go back to my uh, green screen. I love it. <laughs> so you saw those holes. Now, catheters have two openings. Right here, you got the red, which is arterial blood, uh, which opening which draws uh, blood from the arterial, and goes through the machine, get clean. We all know it goes through the dialyzer, right, where the magic happens. And then it comes back into the venous, starting that whole cycle again. Um, now, how do you take care of this? Something sticking out of your body. How do you take care of that? A lot of warriors not um, familiar with it, and clinics should be teaching that but they don't have time because they're busy or short of staff. Let me go back to my, um, to uh, my example or my uh, prototype. So by taking good care of your access, 
it will last longer and you and your care team uh i'm sorry let me i'm sorry let me start over by taking good care of your access it will last longer and you will prevent problems such as infection and clotting here are some important tips to take keep the catheter dressing clean and dry make sure the area of the insertion site is clean and your care team changes the dressing at each dialysis session at each one guys keep an emergency dressing kit at home in case you need to change your dressing in between treatments ask your dialysis care team to teach you how to change dressings in the emergency even if you got to go on amazon get some dressings never remove the caps on the end of your catheter air must not enter the catheter again do not shower or swim you may take baths I think i already went over this i've been i'm so excited i did go over this your care team should use your uh dialysis catheter to draw blood or get medication oh no i didn't wear a mask over your nose and mouth anytime the catheter is open to prevent bacteria from entering the catheter and your bloodstream professionals changing the dressing should wear a mask and gloves as well the caps and the clamps of your catheter should be kept tightly closed when not being used for dialysis only your care team should be should use your dialysis catheter to draw blood or to get medications or fluid. If the area around your catheter feels sore or looks red, call your dialysis care team at once. Ask your dialysis care team about signs and symptoms that require immediate attention. And I talked about this. Know your KTOV and URR, which stands for your reduction ratio. Uh, yep, I went over that. Now, should you have concerns about your catheter? Absolutely. Sometimes, even when you are very careful, your access may clot or become infected. Now, I showed you uh, the openings. Clots can form inside the opening of the catheter or form on the outside of the catheter and block the opening. This can cause blood to flow at a slower rate than the rate your doctor ordered. That's why I say always watch your, what your ordered blood flow rate is because the technician will come over there and turn it down if they're having problems. If the blood flow rate remains low for more than one dialysis treatment, the catheter should be checked and treated the same day. Early treatment may prevent the clot from totally blocking the catheter. It is important to restore the recommended blood flow rate and treat clots that are forming so that your catheter continues to work well and you get the amount of dialysis needed. Share this broadcast, y'all. There's a lot of people with catheters that don't know this information. Infection can also occur even with a good blood flow rate. It is important to follow your catheter care instructions exactly as you were taught in order to avoid infection. You should know the following signs and symptoms of a catheter infection and report them immediately to your doctor or dialysis team right away, guys. Don't hesitate right away so you can get the proper treatment as quickly as possible. The signs and symptoms of a catheter infection include, here we go, guys, say it out with me, fever, chills, drainage from the catheter exit site, redness or tenderness around the catheter exit site, general feeling of weakness and illness. However, treatment depends on the type of infection, but may include, number one, an ointment applied directly to the infected area if it is an exit site infection. 
Two, antibiotic medication if there is drainage from the exit site. And three, an intravenous IV antibiotic, which is a solution containing an antibiotic that is administered directly into a vein if the infection has spread to the blood. Let me see, I got a comment. Hey, thank you, Mr. Jarrett, for commenting. Absolutely. Um, there should be more warriors on this uh, broadcast getting this information because a lot of them got catheters and don't know this information. Now, let me remove this, and I want to tell you what happens when these devices are not working well. When you want to know what happens if this was inside your body, right? Wouldn't you want to know what to do or what happens if it's not working well? Come on now, look at this. Let me, can you imagine this sticking outside of your body? Hundreds and thousands of warriors have this. They have it, and we need to educate them so we can reduce the infection rate. You heard me the other day about one in five people with catheters get a bloodstream infection. So a decrease in the blood flow rate ordered by your doctor is a sign the catheter is not working as it should be. If this occurs for more than one treatment in a week, the catheter should be checked. You will then need a longer than usual hemodialysis treatment to get the proper amount of dialysis. Now, why is that so? If they got to reduce your blood flow rate, now you're not getting the proper amount of treatment, thus creating for you to stay on dialysis instead of three and a half, maybe four. Now, another sign that your catheter is not working well may be the pre-pump arterial pressure. Right, that monitors the arterial pressure, right, coming from the line, right here, from the arterial. If that is high, like a negative 280, 300, and your machine is constantly going off, Houston, we have a problem. Okay, again, another sign that your catheter is not working well may be the pre-pump arterial pressure alarm, okay? Now, these sounds notify the care team that, the, that your catheter or other vascular access is not allowing a free draw of blood. It's going negative. It's not getting any blood flow. This can be a sign that a clot is forming in the catheter blocking the blood flow. And as I showed you, right, you can't see it, but these holes, you see these holes on the side? I'm sorry, let me see. Right there, those holes, Patients don't know about those holes and they wonder why their catheter is not working right because blood be sticking to those holes and it can't flow. That's why they, I want to tell you what they use to unblock this. You see this? These holes on the side of this catheter. They're not going to tell you that in a unit. They're not going to sit down with you like Steve, the kidney nurse, and go over this 
to help you understand why you having issues with your catheter and what you can do to make sure the staff is doing their job to prevent this from being blocked. Now, what can be done? You got this or this, right? What can be done to remove the blockage? When there's a blockage, because I guarantee you, if you have one, you know somebody that has one, I guarantee you at least once, in their time of having this, they had to go get it stripped or get it changed or get medication put in. But what can be done to remove blockage from your catheter? I'm going to tell you that right after this PSA. Hey guys, I'm back. Steve, the kidney nurse. Thank you for watching. Uh, please share this broadcast. Uh, share this broadcast. I want to pour something up uh, and show you guys right quick uh, that's going to help bring this home. Give me one second. So again, we're going to talk about what can be done to remove the blockage. Uh, if you ever had a catheter or if you got one now and you may be having some issues and you don't know what's going on, uh, I want to tell you what's going on. Because uh, this is one of the common problems with uh, catheters. Give me one second, guys. I just want to get this um, picture for you so I can bring this example home. All right, let me bring it in. So if you got a catheter, right? Hold up. Wait a minute, guys. Bring this picture in right quick. Here we go. Okay. So, if you got a catheter, a lot of times we're using this uh, medication. Uh, so, again, what can be done to remove the blockage from your catheter? Uh, treatment is the administration of a clot buster. That's what we call it, a clot buster in the nursing field. Medication called tissue plas plasma. Let me get this right. Tissue plasminogen activator or TPA for short. Most dialysis centers can get a medication at the end of your treatment. However, let me just share this. This medication is expensive and if you go to a DaVita or Fresenius, they rarely keep this in their inventory. They may keep either one or two boxes, but they don't keep a lot because it's expensive. Um, and they don't put it in and send you home with it. They normally put it in while you're at treatment. Thus, if you have to get this put in, they it shortens your treatment. Because I can guarantee you, they don't run you your full treatment. 
So most dialysis centers can get a medication while you at, while you are in the dialysis chair, thus preventing a hospital visit. If you are at the end of your treatment, TPA can be given just before your next treatment appointment. Ask your doctor how you can arrange to be given this medication before your next treatment session. If the clot is not treated, when signs and symptoms of an early clot are found, the catheter can progress to be fully clotted. You may then be required to visit the hospital or vascular lab to have a catheter checked and possibly exchanged for a completely new catheter. Now, how many warriors had their catheter exchanged? I could tell you many I sent to the access center or to the hospital to get it changed, to get it exchanged. How was medication given? So what we normally do, uh, let me read what it says. Uh, that your healthcare provider injects the medication directly into the catheter, open it. It needs to remain inside the catheter for 30 minutes to break down the clot. After 30 minutes, if enough blood flow is not restored, the doctor can repeat the process. So that's true. With that, right, we draw, I'll have my syringe, but we draw up two cc's if you can look at it we draw two cc's of normal saline right or bacterial static water and then we inject that into the vial which is a powder and then we stir it up shake it up reconstitute it as we call it and it becomes a liquid form we draw that up, two cc's, and then we instill it in the patient's catheter. But instead of 30 minutes, we do 45. And then we had the patient sit in the chair, and then we come back in 45 minutes, and usually you get a good patent flow. However, if, if it doesn't open up, then we can do that, repeat that same process. But again, if you run three hours, just know your time is being uh, cut short. Now, what are the benefits of treating the clot early? Let me remove this. Um, the benefits of treating the clot early by restoring your blood flow, hemodialysis can work as it should to remove the toxins, and excess fluid from your body. Taking care of the clot early results in fewer treatment interruptions and improved quality of life on dialysis. And other benefits are the prevention of additional health problems and the chance to live longer on dialysis, okay? What can you do to keep your catheter working well? All right, let me tell you that, and we're going to close it on up. One, learn as much as possible about your prescribed treatment plan, your blood flow rate, how often and how long you need treatment. Two, stay the treatment plan. Stay your full dialysis treatment, right? Also, watch videos such as this. There needs to be more warriors on here, but that's okay. Hopefully, they'll get it on the back end, and this video will reach more warriors with catheters, and they will be able to see it. Keep your dialysis appointments. Arrive on time to your hemodialysis treatments. Three, ask your doctor how much dialysis you should be getting. All right, keep a record. Keep a record of your KT over V and URR numbers. A lot of warriors don't do that. Also, talk to your dialysis team if your numbers are not as good as they should be. That's why you need to follow up and know what that KT over V and URR are. Those two numbers are indicators 
on how you feel. If those numbers are low, you may not be feeling your best, especially if you got a catheter, especially because those while you get on the machine and go to sleep, if you got a catheter and your catheter is not working right and it's setting the machine off, and you got one of them lazy caregivers, they'll just turn it down, keep turning it down. I know, I've seen it. I've done it. So that's why I'm telling you, pay attention. If you got a catheter, pay attention to your blood flow rate, what it should be, what it is when you go on, and make sure you document, document, document. Four, share your concerns with your nephrologist, kidney doctor, and the dialysis team. You may want to ask them the following questions. How can I tell if my catheter is not working? How would you know? What is the flow rate that the doctor ordered for me? Why does the flow rate for my catheter need to be at the level you have it at now if it's not at the prescribed rate. If my flow rate should go down, when will I be giving clot dissolving medication? Something you need to ask. Also, will the clot dissolving medication interrupt? You remember I said that? Will it interrupt my dialysis treatment? If so, what will happen to the rest of my treatment? Your treatment get interrupted, you still get billed the same. You don't get no discount on insurance payments. So make sure you get your full treatment is what I'm saying. Last but not least, no, I'm sorry. How will you put the clot dissolving medication into your catheter, how long do you have to wait for it to work? Most places wait at least 45 minutes. It says it on the package. This comes with a package of how to use the medication. And it's between 30 to 45 minutes. Don't sell yourself short, warriors. Also, find out what are the signs and symptoms of a catheter or bloodstream infection. Guys, it's been a blessing. It's been humbling to have the three people on here. Since I couldn't come on Facebook, I got restricted for 24 hours. I cannot make a comment or respond to comments on Facebook. So please share this video. It's very critical. I can't even share it to my Facebook page. It's very critical that you share this information in Jesus name. Thank you guys for watching. You stay safe, stay blessed and encouraged. I'd like to thank our followers from YouTube for watching. Love you guys. Please like, share, and subscribe to the Urban Health Nurse. I'm sorry, to Steve, the Kidney Nurse YouTube page, Urban Health Outreach Media YouTube page, and the Warriors Quest YouTube page. Thank you guys for watching. Again, God bless you. And we see you later for another educational broadcast. See you guys soon. Peace.